Dominic, we're going to demonstrate now the ability to make a QSO or a contact using a mode other than telephony. So that could be a data mode or it could be Morse code, which we'll get to later. But let's start with the data. What are we going to use to make this demonstration contact? Okay, we're going to be using radio teletype or RTTY, it's also known as. Uh, it's one of the earliest digital modes. It dates from well before the 1940s. It was used during the war. Um, and kind of like Morse code where you've got dots and dashes which represent the letters, with radio teletype you've got two different audio tones uh, which represent the letters. But we don't have to remember how to do that. It's machine generated. And what are you using equipment wise to do this? Okay, so we're going to be using uh, a computer. Uh, back in the day, they might have used a radio teletype machine, a bit like a typewriter. But from our perspective these days, just type on the keyboard. The keyboard's connected to the computer. That's going to do all the work to convert it into audio tones coming out onto the radio's microphone socket. And then it gets, gets transmitted like any other signal. So as we're connected into the microphone socket of the radio, I guess one of the first things we've got to do, as we do if we're using a microphone into the radio for the first time, is to set up the audio level. So I should say, first of all, that there are some radios which will have a dedicated socket for data modes. If you've got one of those, probably use it. Uh, in our case, we're on the microphone socket. So yes, we're going to need to set the, uh, the ALC, set the gain, to make sure we're doing the right thing. So if I just set the radio to transmit a uh, continuous tone. I've already listened to the frequency, made sure it's clear. So I'm going to send a continuous tone and then we need to move the mic, uh, mic knob until we've got the right level. At the moment I'm transmitting too little, it's not even moving the meter at all. If I bring it up, I can make it massively overshoot, which means it's going to be uh, transmitting too much, it's going to be distorting. So bring it back a bit into the middle of this thick bar, blue bar for the ALC. That'll be good for transmitting, and then I can stop the transmitter again. You mentioned that you checked that the frequency was clear, and of course, with different modes, there is a band plan, so the idea is that we don't just pop up wherever we like using whatever mode we like. No, absolutely, and in fact, on some modes, that there are a discrete frequency, so you have to be on exactly the right frequency for that mode. So yeah, check the band plan first. And so for 40 meters, which is where we are, seven megs, uh, the frequency we're using is? 7.060. Um, which is kind of the right place for, for radio teletype. So how do we initiate our contact then? Well, so all we do is just like we might do with any other contact, we're going to call CQ, someone's hopefully going to come back to us, and then we'll exchange name, signal report, location, just like any other contact, except we're going to be typing it. What is the software that we're using then, Don? So this is some software called FLDG. Uh, it's free and it runs on most operating systems and it's really good for data modes. It does RTTY, which is what we're going to use it for now, but it does do a bunch of other data modes as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. There's a whole long list of uh, modes that it supports. Some of them very popular, some of them not so much used. But uh, yes, it supports most things. Pretty good then, considering that it's a free piece of software. Just talk us through the screen, because there's different bits up there. How, how are we using and what are we using on that screen? Okay, so the main bits are the yellow bit at the top, which is showing us the, what signal that we've received, and everything that it's decoded. The blue bit at the bottom is where I'll be typing my message, what it's going to send. And the black bit, that big black bit at the bottom? So the big black bit at the bottom is called the waterfall. Uh, it's, nothing's happening there at the moment because there's no signals around. But when the other person starts transmitting, you should see their audio tones. Hopefully they will line up with the red bars because that's where it's listening. Ah, because it's two tones. So that's why we can see those two lines. Exactly. OK, let's give it a go. CQ and see if somebody comes back to us. OK. And I notice you put a K at the end of the sentence. That means Over. What? Ah, right. So that means I've finished typing. Your turn now. Exactly. So uh, M0VFC is coming back. He's now put KN on the end, which means over to the person I'm talking to only, rather than being a general invitation. So I can now type back to him, uh, go into transmit mode. There's a possibility, I suppose, when we're using this kind of communication with RTTY that part of your message might be lost if there's interference or fading. So I noticed you typed Bletchley twice. Is that, is that the reason? Just that's because that's an important bit of information. Exactly. Uh, you'll notice I put the signal report twice, the call signs twice, my name twice. 
black three twice means if there's a little bit of fading on the band, you're still going to get, hopefully, get the message. And he's finished SK, SK. Yes, uh, so this is it's another abbreviation. It derives from Morse code. It means the end of transmission. I've got nothing more to say. So that's explained how we do a straightforward, simple data QSO. Dom, thanks very much. We're going to take a look now at Morse code. Now, Morse code isn't a requirement for the amateur radio license anymore. But a lot of operators still get a great deal of enjoyment from making contacts using Morse code. You can get some amazing distances with really low power and simple equipment. We send Morse code using a series of short dots or longer dashes. So for example, if I wanted to send the letter A, it's dot dash or Q. And like that, I can send any letters or numbers that I want to. As well as the straight key here, which sends all the time I hold it down, you might also find people using a Morse paddle. This has two levers. The right-hand side sends dashes, and the left-hand side sends dots. And in the same way, I can use that to send any letters. For example, CQ. Now, I'm here at the National Radio Centre, so I'll send their call sign. Golf Bravo 3, Romeo Sierra. G. B. 3. R. S. And you can use this to have contacts just like you would on voice or data. I'll just call CQ. And there we go. That's a quick introduction to Morse code.